You're listening to The Cash Podcast, creating affluence, success, and happiness with your financial surgeon, Adam Coach, president and portfolio manager at Libertas Wealth Management Group at LibertasWealth.com. Hello and happy Friday, everyone. Uh, the stock market has gone absolutely nowhere for six weeks now. And the big question that everyone is asking when they're looking at their 401k, their retirement portfolio, their investments is if the increase in coronavirus cases, hospitalizations, and the recent uptick in deaths is going to cause the other shoe to drop in the stock market. So that's what we're talking about today. Um, but before we get started, as always, a few housekeeping items. Um, if this is your first time listening or watching, thanks so much for joining us. The Cash Podcast is produced weekly. Uh, and as stated in the intro, Cash stands for creating affluence, success, and happiness. And that's our mission. My hope is for you to learn a little bit more on each and every episode so that you become more successful, wealthier, happier, and more educated than you were when you started watching today or listening. Um, so come back often. Feel free to subscribe on both iTunes and YouTube. In addition, you can also follow me on Twitter at Adam Koch and on Instagram at Financial Surgeon. Uh, last but not least, since I'm going to be talking about a couple charts here today, these charts will be available on our website at LibertasWealth.com. So let's go ahead and jump right ahead here. What we're looking at on the screen here is the number of positive coronavirus cases per day with a seven-day moving average. So we're just, uh, the, the dark solid line is kind of smoothing things out. And uh, it gives us a better idea of what the trend is. As you can see here, that the number of cases that we're seeing, daily cases that is, uh, have easily exceeded the highs set from back in April. Um, if you go to the right, what we see here is the percentage of positive tests. Um, so one of the concerns that are out there is that the percentage of tests have gone up for, without a doubt. In other words, there's more, te more testing happening. The problem is, is that there's actually a higher percentage of new cases than there is a percentage of new tests. Um, the, the next down here, bottom left quadrant, is the number of ho hospitalizations. And you can see here we're starting to reach the peak of April as well when it comes to the number of hospitalizations, which is probably an even bigger concern and really probably what most people are really focused on because you know just because we have cases doesn't mean that those cases turn into hospitalizations and just because we have hospitalizations doesn't mean that those hospitalizations turn into deaths and that's the final chart in the bottom right here the bottom right is showing us that uh, we're starting to see an uptick in the number of people passing away as a result of the coronavirus. Now, I know you've probably seen videos, um, probably articles that you've read about the, uh, I don't know, the, the protocol when it comes to someone passing away via um, any illness. And if they happen to have coronavirus at the time of passing, it's supposed to be coded as a coronavirus death. So we do have to keep that in mind as well. But obviously, all of these things are clearly ticking up. And of course, it's not it's not the virus that matters as much when it comes to the economy and the stock market as much as is the reaction to that news. So depending on what the government does, um, and obviously California has pretty much already gone back to a lockdown, um, that I think is going to be the bigger issue when it comes to the economy and the stock, stock market. If we move on, uh, the second chart or chart number two here uh, that I'm paying attention to and probably the number one reason why I've continued to be so defensive on a long-term basis is the, this chart that you're looking at right here. Now, if you're listening on iTunes, I'm going to walk your way through it verbally. Um, but on the top of the chart, we see a, uh, a chart of the S&P 500, which you know peaked and headed down at late February into March. We had the waterfall decline, uh, fastest stock market crash in U.S. history. And then we've kind of had this rally that's occurred since then, um, which has been good in the short term. But the problem is that when you see the market go up, when you see the, the, the S&P 500 go up, the Dow go up, what you want to see is, especially on the S&P 500, which is what you're looking at here, um, you want to you see a lot of the stocks on the S&P 500 going up, not just uh, the index itself, because the index, the S&P 500 index, is a basket of 505 stocks, but the biggest stocks in this basket carry the most weight. So for instance, I believe that the number as recently that I saw is the top five stocks on the S&P 500 carry over 23% of the weight of the index. So if those five companies go up in value, those five stocks, then the whole index is gonna go up in value. Furthermore, of course, if they go down, then the whole index is going to go down. So what we wanna see is, I call those the generals, and uh, what we wanna see is the troops coming behind the generals, because when you have the generals rushing into battle um, against a, a front line of enemies, you don't want those generals to turn around and, and uh, look behind them and say, uh-oh, we don't have any troops behind us supporting us. And right 
now, that's still what we're seeing. I'm still seeing a cup half empty uh, middle pane here. And again, just to talk to people through on iTunes, the percentage of stocks that are trading above their 200-day moving average, or in other words, the percentage of stocks on the S&P 500 trading above the 200-day trend is still at only 49% as of yesterday. Um, today is obviously the market's down, so this, this might tick down. Um, but the second number here in the middle is the percentage of stocks on the mid-cap exchange. So this is the um, mid-cap 400, so the 400 stocks on the mid-cap index, and only 38% of those stocks are trading above their 200-day trend. And last but not least, on the bottom, and the most putrid, is the percentage of stocks on the S&P 600, so the 600 stocks on the small cap or small company index, only 33.9, call it 34% of those stocks are trading above their 200-day trend. So these are not healthy numbers. Um, I like to say that when, in order for us to be on offense, we need to at least be in field goal range. And in my opinion, to be in field goal range, I think we want this number to be at 60% or more on at least two of the three of these um, these indices. So in other words, for the S&P 500, if, if that were above 60, so 60% 60 of stocks on the S&P 500 trading above their 200-day trend would be one vote out of three. And then the second vote could be uh, either the mid-cap index, the mid-cap 400, or the small-cap 600. One of those two being in field goal range would give us basically a majority of vote of two out of three, um, which would put us at least in field goal range and make me feel more comfortable taking risk in our more conservative portfolio. So Again, to reiterate, the reason why I've continued to be really defensive on a long-term basis, the reason why our conservative and our balanced models are still extremely defensively positioned is because of this chart right here uh, and other evidence that's very similar to this, which is just telling me that the stock market is still not healthy on the inside. Uh, so on the outside, it looks okay in the short term, but in, on the inside, the internals, the vital signs of the market, its blood pressure, oxygen readings are telling me that we need to continue to take defense. Now, the last thing I want to show you today, and this is a short-term chart we're looking at in the S&P 500, so we're looking at the stock market, um, and like I said at the very beginning of the episode, the market has gone pretty much nowhere for six weeks here. So we're trading in this kind of sideways short-term range, um, and this is chart number three for those of you on iTunes um, that want to refer back to the chart on our website at www.libertaswealth.com. We'll have it posted up there. But um, the market peaked here in uh, early June, and then it's pretty much just gone down uh, in mid-June, up again with kind of a weak rally. Then it went down again in late June. Then it's gone up in July, and it's kind of hit a ceiling, or a, we'll call it a potential ceiling of resistance. And uh, as of today, which isn't shown on this chart because this is as of uh, Wednesday's close, um, it's, it's heading down again. So the big question here is, are we going to head up from here? So are we going to go up out of this range, which would indicate that the market is getting healthier? Um, or are we going to head down and are we going to see another leg lower in the market uh, or said another way, is, are things going to get worse before they get better? Now, if you're watching the news um, and if you're looking at coronavirus cases and fundamentals, uh, you might be thinking, okay, things have to get worse before they get better. And that's possible. I have um, one of the things I always say is I'm a trend follower, not a trend predictor. So my, my goal here, my job is not to try and predict what's going to happen. My job is to uh, put our portfolios and put our portfolio models in the appropriate and the appropriate uh, risk reward uh, configuration based on the the risk profile of that model. So, you know, I mentioned earlier that our conservative and balanced models are extremely defensively positioned still, um, while our uh, moderate growth model is about half, we'll call it half, you know, call it, uh, I'll say one third as of today invested in U.S. stocks, a little bit of gold and some bonds. Our aggressive model, um, as of today, we're probably looking at about 75%, might be trimming a little bit more today uh, invested in stocks, but that could change extremely quickly depending on what happens here. Again, looking at this range that you're seeing on the screen here. So uh, for the people watching, real simple, uh, the market's gone nowhere for six weeks. Um, and we are also faced, uh, and this is not on the screen, we are also faced with uh, the worst two months for the stock market coming up in August and September from a seasonality standpoint. So that's something that I'm also keeping in mind. Um, the stock market gives us a few opportunities each year to, to participate in a nice short-term uptrend, and then it kind of pauses or it corrects. Um, the average uh, stock market corrects about, we'll call it 3 to 5%, three times per year, and the market goes down about 10 to 15% uh, on average once per year, and that's completely normal. Um, but right now, we're still living in the midst of a pandemic. Um, we are still uh, technically below the highs from February. 
Um, in the bottom pane here, uh, we're seeing lower momentum, even though the market has uh, peaked at the same point roughly that it did on June 8th, uh, six weeks ago. So lower momentum relative to the same or higher prices is not good. That's called negative divergence. So there's some negative signs here that things are getting a little frothy, a little long in the tooth. Um, and I think that we're just going to have to really kind of take it easy, be patient, uh, and see what the market decides it's, it's going to do from here. And a lot of that, of course, is going to have have to do with the reaction to the news about the uptick in coronavirus cases, hospitalizations, and deaths, and of course, what the governments decide to do from uh, the standpoint of lockdowns. Um, last but not least, the one other caveat I'll throw out there is there's always that possibility that uh, the U.S. government, the Federal Reserve, start to come out with more stimulus packages. Um, if you've listened to our prior episodes or read any of our prior articles, You'll know that one of my concerns has been uh, that the boost in unemployment ends in a couple weeks here. So the extra $600 per week, unless something changes and that stimulus package is extended, that stimulus ends literally in a couple weeks. Uh, and then the PPP loans, which was a ton of money, trillions of dollars, that was lent out to business owners as forgivable loans that did not need to pay back under certain condition, certain conditions. Um, if the, For these loans uh, that businesses are using for a lot of companies that have pretty much already gone out of business, but they're just operating on paper, um, those loans will be running out sometime here in the next couple months. And again, unless the, the government decides to do more stimulus uh, and provide more money to both individuals and businesses, then I think that could also become a concern coupled with the possibility of an additional lockdown, which uh, would definitely, in my opinion, be uh, crippling to the economy. Uh, so anyway, that's all we've got today. Um, so thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to discuss your personal situation further, remember that you never, ever have to be a client to ask a question. So please have our, head over to our website um, if you'd like to schedule an introduction call and speak privately. But as I always say, um, there are thousands and thousands of podcasts out there these days, and you chose to give ours a listen. So I appreciate it so much, and thank you for tuning in. Please be sure to subscribe both on iTunes and YouTube, of course. Um, you can always feel free to share this with your friends and family. Um, you can sign up uh, for our newsletters. Um, art articles, screencasts, podcasts, and other videos that we record on our website at libertaswealth.com. Um, and again, as mentioned earlier, you can also follow me on Twitter at Adam Koch and on Instagram at Financial Surgeon. So thank you so much once again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to The Cash Podcast with your financial surgeon, Adam Koch. To see any charts or images that were mentioned in this show or to check out additional articles, videos, and other educational resources, head over to LibertasWealth.com.